بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد الحمد لله see how time passes today is the uh, uh, yeah 29th right so 9th or 29th so tomorrow is 29th which means today is one of the odd nights also one of the poss- possible potential Laylatul Qadr nights inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Laylatul Qadr inshallah but how time passes and then tomorrow will be the 29th day and then if we see the moon tomorrow night then Wednesday inshallah is the first of Shawwal so Ramadan is over this way our life also will be over and that is my reminder to myself which is that just like on the first of Ramadan we said oh the whole month is there today the whole month is gone almost we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this whole month full of khair and barakah for us and full of his reward and his rida I remind myself and you that there is a saying they said if you did not start strong finish strong so whichever way we started May Allah cause us to start strong also, but even if we didn't, it doesn't matter. We finish strong, inshallah. And we still have time. We have, inshallah, potentially one light of Qadr. We have another day. Wallah alam, maybe Tarawi tomorrow also, we don't know. If we get Tarawi, alhamdulillah. If we do not get Tarawi, alhamdulillah. Either way. So, finish strong. Now, what is the way, meaning of finish strong? The meaning of finish strong is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He said that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascended the member and he said Ameen three times. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So when he descended, when he came down after his whatever he had to say, the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we saw you saying this thing, Ameen, three times. Why did you say that? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam, came to me and he said, Ya Rasulullah, if somebody gets Ramadan and is not able to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will enter Jahannam, he will enter the fire and Allah will cast him far away. Say Ameen. So, Rasulullah sallallahu said, so I said Ameen. Then he said on the second step of the member, when I ascended, Jibreel alayhi salam said to me, if a person finds his parents in old age, one or both of them, and does not serve them, is not kind to them, does not honor them, then he will enter the hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. Say Ameen. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said Ameen. And on the third step he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam." If your name comes before a person, if somebody hears the word, the name Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Rasulullah, or sallallahu alayhi wa and he does not send salat and salam on you, does not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or does not say uh, Duru Sharif, then he will enter the hellfire, and Allah will cast him far away, say Ameen. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, I said Ameen. Now think about this. Three important du'as, so important that two of the Rasuls of Allah are saying Ameen. The first Rasul is Jibreel Alayhi Salaam himself, he's a Rasul. So he's saying this, this is what you say Ameen. So he's saying Ameen. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is saying Ameen to this thing. Now imagine how critical and important that is. The first of them is to seek forgiveness in Ramadan. The other two are clear, Alhamdulillah. So I won't elaborate on that serving your parents and also sending Salat and Salam on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit, in a bit. But just now, in Ramadan, the purpose of Ramadan is to become muttaqun, to become people of taqwa. And taqwa begins with istighfar and tawbah. When our mother and father, Hawa Alayhi Salam and Adam Alayhi Salam, when they made a mistake and they were sent out from Jannah into this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the key to return back home, which is Jannah. Jannah is our home. This is not our home. Our home, inshallah, is Jannah. We came from there. 
That is our hope. Not this place. And Allah gave them the key to return. What is the key? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, we have transgressed against ourselves. We have made zulum against ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, then we will be among the losers. The key is istighfar. The key is to seek forgiveness. The key is to apologize to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the key. Bifta wa jannah is the key to jannah. This is what Allah gave them. When they left, Allah gave them the key, come back. This is how you come back. When you when Yunus alayhi salam made a mistake, and he was swallowed by the whale and he was in the in the belly of the whale my uh, side note i think that was a whale shark which is a non non uh, carnivorous animal and it has a big enough mouth to swallow a human being whales can't swallow things except killer whales which tear you apart so anyway that's that's a different so when he was in the belly of the whale what did he do what is the dua he made? La ilaha illanta subhanak inni kuntu mina zalimi. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said anybody who makes a dua after saying this La ilaha illanta subhanak inni kuntu mina zalimi Allah will accept this dua. Again same thing. Istighfar and tawbah. Ya Allah I made, I made zulum myself. Oh Allah I transgressed against myself. Istighfar and Tawbah. And that is what I remind myself and you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about himself. He said, I make istighfar 70 times every day. One day Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she says to him, Ya Rasulullah, please make dua for me. She says, I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa look very happy. One day, she said Why, from his face, I saw that he was, he looked very happy. So I thought, let me take advantage of that. So I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, please make dua for me. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha whatever she has done and whatever she will do. Now yeah, see this dua. He said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha whatever she has done and whatever she will do to the end of her life. Now Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha said, I was so happy, I started laughing and I almost fell down. She was so happy. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to her, Aisha, does my dua make you happy? She said, Ya Rasulullah, of course. How can this dua not make me happy? This is the best dua in the world. He said, Aisha, by the one in whose hand is the life of Muhammad, I make this dua for my ummah every day. Huh? Think about this. She had to ask him for this dua. We get it without asking. <coughs> Imagine. We get this without asking. He said, I make this dua for my umba every day. Who is umba? You and me. So we sent Salatul Salam on Rasulullah Sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima and say salam to you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallita ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna gamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna gamidun majid. In conclusion, I mentioned this hadith briefly yesterday or day before yesterday, I can't remember now, in Musnad Imam Muhammad, where Rasulullah sallallahu is reported to have said that when the Slave makes istighfar when the man or woman seeks forgiveness often with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve his problems. Allah will extract him from his difficulties. Allah will do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide him from sources he cannot imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become sufficient for this person. And as I mentioned to you, this is the literally the tafsir of the ayat of Surah Al-Talaq, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْذُقُهُ مِنْ هَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَرْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ هَزْبُ Now, Imam Ahmad himself, who collected and narrated this hadith, 
One day, he was very old at that time. He must, must have been in his 80s or something. He was traveling. And you know, the, the tawada, the humility of the great scholars. Imam Ahmad was at that time probably the greatest scholar on the face of the earth. He was the imam and the khatib of Masjid the Nabi Sharif. So he could have traveled with a big retinue of people. He was traveling alone by himself. Some, his, some of his whatever is, you know, backpack kind of thing on his back. Old man. So he reached a place, a small village or town. And it was late in the night. So he wanted to stay somewhere. There is no hotel or anything like this. So he, there was, he found a masjid. He went in there, he prayed. And after he prayed, the caretaker, the mausin or somebody of the masjid was there. So he said to him, can I have your permission? Can I sleep here? The man said, no. He said, no. It was very unusual because, you know, the first of all, the Arabs are very hospitable people. They're very, very kind and very hospitable people. They will never say no to something like this. Second thing is, it's a masjid. And one poor old man wants to sleep. Obviously, the man did not recognize Imam Ahmed. So, one poor old man wants to sleep. What's the problem? Right? Now, Imam Ahmed could have introduced himself. He could have said, I am so and so. He didn't say all this. The man said, no. Imam Ahmed tried to persuade him. He said, look, you know, I'm an old man. I am traveling. I have come all this way. I am very tired. All I want to do is just sleep on the floor here. He said, no. You can't sleep here. Huh? Ajib. So Imam Muhammad said, okay, you know those, I mean many of us in our home uh, cities and so on, you see the small, older masajid, you will have a, like this, the, the musalla, the prayer place, and then like you have your social hall, usually that is open to the sky, it's like a courtyard, right, and then there is a boundary wall. He said, okay, let me sleep there, not in your musalla, I will sleep in the courtyard outside. He said, no, you cannot sleep anywhere here. Imam Ahmad was absolutely astounded. He said, what kind of man is this? Not only that, the man picked up Imam Ahmad's things. He got him by his hand. He took him to the outside and he threw his stuff on the, on the road and he pushed him out. He said, go. Now imagine, la ilaha illallah. In the night, alone, he does not know anybody. And this is how he has been treated. Across from the on across the street from the masjid was a bakery, and there was a baker making bread. Now this baker saw all this happening, so he came out of his bakery. He picked up Imam Ahmad's saman, his bow, his things, and he said, "Please come, come with me." He took him inside his bakery and a nice oven and nice and warm and so on. He said he he, he spread his bed there on in the side in a nice clean place. He said, "You please stay here. Don't worry about this man. That, that man is crazy. You stay in my bakery." So Imam Ahmad said, Alhamdulillah, at least some kind person in this place. So he, he said, I was sitting there and I noticed that this man is making istighfar continuously. He is, make, he is making his bread and he is saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. He is going on making istighfar continuously while he is doing his work. So Imam Ahmad Rahmatullah says that I watched him for a long time. And then I asked him, I said, you know, I noticed that you are doing this. That you are continuously making istighfar as you are working. He said, yes. He said, I do this. This is my way. I, the whole night I make bread. And the whole night I make istighfar. Yeah? Imagine, this is a, these are lessons for us to learn. You know, we, we, you drive your car. You go somewhere. You are reading. You are studying. Keep on making zikr. Don't, don't just waste the time. Don't make, just waste. Whatever zikr. Istighfar is one of the most beautiful ones. So he said. He said, I do this. So Imam Muhammad Rahmatullah says that in that case, Allah has shown you his signs, his karamat. Tell me, what did you see? What did you see from Allah? Because it has to be. He said, this is the hadith in my in, in the in the book. Right? He didn't say my book. He said, this is the hadith of Isa So, what has Allah shown you? The man said, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts every dua I make except one. <laughs> he said, every dua I make, Allah accepts. Till today, whatever dua I have made, Allah has accepted except one dua. Now, Imam Ahmad said, I got very, you know, uh, intrigued. He said, what is one dua? So, he said, which is one dua that Allah did not accept? 
He said, you know, I made dua. Ya Allah, I want to meet Ahmad bin Hanbal. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Oh, no, no, no. Huh? But he said, I am busy with this work the whole time. I have nowhere to, I, I can't leave this and go. I have to go all the way to Badira. I can't do that. So I'm making this dua. Allah accepted every dua of mine. Except this one dua. I said, Ya Allah, I want to meet Ahmad bin Hanbal. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. <coughs> Imam Ahmad started, started weeping. So I said, why are you crying? He said, because I am Ahmad bin Hanbal. He said, now I know why Allah threw me out of his house. He said, Allah did not allow me to stay in his house. Because of your dua. Allah sent me here to you. He said, I'm trying to think, why did this Moses, why did this man not let me sleep in the masjid, the house of Allah? He said, now I know why, because of you. Because of your dua, Allah, Allah took me out from his house and sent me to you. Because of your dua. This is the power of istighfar. <coughs> huh? The man said, I want to meet him. Ahmad bin Hamad. Allah sent Ahmad bin Hamad. Our sisters really always keep our tongues moist with the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the best and finest afghar is of course istighfar. And of course, more than anything else, durood and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anyone who sends salam on me once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send salam on that person ten times. If you just say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad wa barik sallim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends salam on you ten times. For every once, ten times. I tell you, Allah is my witness. You read the road, you, you, you recite the road, your heart will, be, will, go, will, will <coughs> be at peace. Your worries will go away. Whatever you are doing, Allah will open doors. Difficulties will vanish. I, I even, I mean, I am crazy. I really don't follow me. I'm just telling you. I even use this to find parking. Really? Right? People say, oh, very big is the ham. A lot of uh, traffic and this and that. We'll never get parking. I said, wait, 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 wait till we get there. And I start reciting the rule. <laughs> And when you go there, right at the place you want, somebody will pull out at that time. <laughs> like he's waiting for, keeping the place for you. No, he pulls out. Ajib. This is the power of the word of Allah. Duru Sharif is zikr and it is salam on Rasulullah. And for every one time we say that, Allah sends salam on that individual ten times. What more do you want? So I remind myself and you, let us spend the last few hours that we have left, not in argument, not in debates. Please, you know, think about this. On any matters, practically every matter, you will find there are differences of opinion among the scholars. Right? You have different scholars have different opinions on how to do this, how to do that, which is far. Then somebody says this is not far. This is uh, uh, this is you know sunnah and it's not the same level and this and that. Whatever. One thing on which all scholars of all the mothers are agreed upon is that making divisions is haram. Everyone, Hanafi, Shafi, Hanbali, Maliki. Even Shia, Sunni, everybody is together on one thing which is to make divisions in the Ummah is haram. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fast together and do not form divisions. Allah did not say, لَا تَخْتَلِفُوا Allah did not say, do not have اختلاف الرأي He did not say, do not have a division of difference of opinion. Allah said, do not form divisions. There's a difference. I can, I can disagree. You can have an opinion. I can, have a, I, can, I can disagree with you. You can disagree with me. No problem. But we still retain politeness to each other. We still are kind to each other. We still honor each other. We don't say, I will not see your face. I will not pray behind you. This, this is the problem. So please, no divisions. No divisions. By all means, Alhamdulillah, you have, your, you have your dalil because of which you do something in a particular way. Somebody else has another one. If you want to tell that person, by all means tell that person. 
if somebody is telling you something don't fight with them say alhamdulillah jazakum allah khairan i i have understood you i have, I have heard you enough you need not do what they are telling you you do whatever you want to do no problem but don't fight and don't create divisions be together as one this is the very very critical thing as i told you people have difference of opinions about everything but this one thing everyone is agreed upon though we don't do it but we agreed upon that may allah have mercy on us we agreed upon something but we don't do it huh? ajeeb but really seriously at least at our level that we can't we can't be with everybody on our level don't waste time especially these times but even otherwise don't waste time on useless uh, arguments and debates and tafsiras and explanations and you know i have a principle in my life i say that i will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control i will not allow what's not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control which means that if something is not in my control i don't talk about it right so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to maximize the value of, our, of the time that he has given us so that when we when we go to him we will go inshallah without regrets we say alhamdulillah i use my time to the best of my ability and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness which we need in any case even after that wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika